All right, we're doing an impromptu live show this afternoon, and I don't even, we didn't have a real intro, so we're using the old school one. Uh, obviously, uh, very busy uh, uh, days that we've got here out at LSU, and um, LSU women's basketball, LSU baseball, LSU football. Press and I were out at LSU football practice uh, earlier today, and because the practice ran long, and, and when we got Brian Kelly done, we didn't get to do our smoky investment team football practice report immediately after because I had to get over to the PMAC uh, for Kim Mulkey and player interviews. And boy, did Kim Mulkey drop a bomb. So I said, you know what? Uh, this smoky investment team practice report is just morphed into a, a live show where we're going to discuss uh, what Kim Mulkey had to say. We're going to talk about what we witnessed at LSU football practice. Obviously, we got the entire football practice this morning. Um, the normal 15 to 20 minutes of uh, camera up and the rest of it, cameras were, were down and uh, we got to witness the rest of it. And so we've got a lot to talk about there. But um, obviously, again, Kim Mulkey um, and the, the word uh, obviously got out yesterday when Pat Forty uh, tweeted out uh, his knowledge of a, a piece uh, coming out from a Washington Post reporter, Kent Babb. And... Um, that LSU was, in his words, circling the wagons, and I think, yes, they are. I will say this before Mulkey uh, took to the podium uh, for the NCAA uh, uh, tournament, uh, her, the mandated coaches, uh, pressers that you have in between games previewing tomorrow. Um, I thought it was odd some of the people that I saw in the building that, that normally weren't there. I don't know if it was just coincidence or they knew that she was going to have this opening statement, which I uh, had some – some legal stuff in it, but um, I tell you what we need to do. Uh, we've got it uh, queued up, don't we, Preston? Oh, yeah. Uh, and by the way, let me introduce Preston Guy. He's with us. Uh, but we're going to let you see, I think it was about two and a half minutes long. Uh, maybe uh, a little longer, about three. Let's but we'll let it and- air. It's good stuff. I promise you're not going to be bored. Uh, one thing I want to point out about Kent Babb before we go into this, um, Kent Babb is a journalism alumni of South Carolina University. Of course. 2004. Uh, Went on to write at The State, which is a South Carolina newspaper, covering South Carolina sports. So, you know, I I joked with Mike before the show. I said, Kid Babb taking out a hit piece on Kim Mulkey would be like Preston Guy leaving Tiger Bait for the Washington Post taking out a a hit piece on Alabama or something like that. You know, you got to kind of understand the background there. So let's let's uh, let's air this sucker and let's let's hear from her. Thinks he has gone to try and put a hit piece together. This reporter has been working on a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Are you kidding me? This was a ridiculous deadline that LSU and I could not possibly meet, and the reporter knew it. It was just an attempt to prevent me from commenting and an attempt to distract us from this tournament. It ain't going to work, buddy. Unfortunately, this is part of a pattern that goes back years. I told this reporter two years ago that I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly. And that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. After that, the reporter called two former college coaches of mine and left multiple messages that he was with me in Baton Rouge to get them to call him back. Trying to trick these coaches into believing that I was working with the Washington Post on a story. When my former coaches spoke to him and found out that I wasn't talking with the reporter, they were just distraught and they felt completely misled. Former players have told me that the Washington Post has contacted them and offered to let them be anonymous in a story if they'll say negative things about me. The Washington Post has called former disgruntled players to get negative quotes to include in their story. 
They're ignoring the 40 plus years of positive stories that, that people or they have heard from people about me. But you see reporters who give a megaphone to a one-sided embellished version of things aren't trying to tell the truth. They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the click machine. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists and the media anymore. It's these kinds of sleazy tactics and hatchet jobs that people are just tired of. I'm fed up. And I'm not going to let the Washington Post attack this university, this awesome team of young women I have, or me without a fight. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country. And I will sue the Washington Post if they publish a false story about me. Not many people are in a position to hold these kind of journalists accountable. But I am and I'll do it. That's all I'm going to say about this right now. And now I'm going to get back to talking about my basketball team and winning this game tomorrow. There you go. Um, look, it's what they do. And look, I, she can get hire hire uh, uh, an attorney and spend a lot of money. Uh, the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Boston Globe, the Los Angeles Times, uh, those newsrooms are filled with mass communication majors that um, uh, I'm sorry. That <laughs> it's, it's how they're made these days. And um, they know that because she's a public figure, that um, good luck with her, you know, having, uh, you know, it's just a t you, you, proving, uh, you know, those uh, libel or, or defama defamation is so difficult when you're such a high profile figure as Kim Mulkey. Um, um, you've seen some, uh, you know, teenagers and and, and some non uh, public figures have some luck with that and have some nice paydays. Um, but uh, th this one's always difficult. Of course, we're, we have yet to see the story. I don't know when it's going to be published. Um, I'm sure the Washington Post is going to do their due diligence now and go over every letter and every word in it. Um, but yes, uh, Kent Babb uh, it has South Carolina roots. Um, we looked at his uh, LinkedIn, and uh, he is a grad of South Carolina, right, Preston? He's a grad, class of 2004, went on to write. I mean, what I knew he was a grad, people were saying that. What really surprised me is he's not only a grad, he also went to work at a local paper covering South Carolina sports. So again, it's like Preston Guy <laughs> doing this for against Alabama or Tennessee, you know. Yeah, something and, like and, that. and you know, you know what these things are. You know what these things are for, right? It, this goes back to exactly what I said on on our live show two weeks ago, um, where I, I talked about what the angles are. You've got Bakari Sellers over at CNN, who does what he does on Twitter. They call her hashtag MAGA Malky. Um, I assure you, uh, if or when this uh, Washington Post story is published, um, there will be printed copies that opposing coaches and their recruiting staffs will use when they go into recruits' homes to show this is what uh, it's like to play for Kim Mulkey. Uh, th that's what sure. these hatchet jobs are for. Sure, true or not. And and you can book it. There's going to be some more grinder stuff in there, I bet, and – and here's the thing about the, you know, that just like I said several weeks ago, there's mul there's there's a whole side of that story that Kim Mulkey has yet to tell because mm -hmm. it's it's a no-win situation. Um, but there's some things that uh, Griner put in that book that were false, and she admitted that it was false, and I'm told uh was gonna make a public apology to Kim Mulkey, and she never did. And uh and then and that whole thing got spiraled uh, out of control. Everybody in Waco knows about it. And so I, I just think this is unfortunate for Kim Mulkey. Um, look, there, there's you can talk about who she is, why this is going on. Obviously, she's an outspoken person. Um, she's very successful. and um, uh, But 
the bottom line is on the other side, this is all agenda driven. And um, so we're going to talk about that a little bit more. And of course, like I said, this is going to be a spring football practice report because it's a smoky investment team practice report. But uh, Kim Bulky dropped this atom bomb on us uh, in, in, in the one o'clock hour. And um, so we, we're making it a combo and we decided to go live about it. Mike, I got to ask you real quick. Do you think Kim Mulkey hiring a defamation firm, do you think it's because she cares and wants the money? Or do you think she's just doing it to punish the Washington Post for no, doing something it, it, nonsense? No, it's, it, it's, it's to it, punish it, him, right? He's willing well, to spend resources it, and take a loss. It's to make a point and to let people like that know that you can't get away with. The problem is, is that it's so difficult to win those kind of cases. It is. And it is. she can sit down with the, the best – defamation lawyer in america and believe me he he him or her will tell kim mulkey how difficult the case is and whether she's got one or not yeah um a lot Which of it up? on the early a lot of it on the early end though like what she's doing is kind of a, a pre-offensive so to speak um but it's just the nature of journalism these days and um uh, the Washington Post is one of the, the worst. Um, if you follow uh, anything uh, nationally, uh, you know full well about Taylor Lorenz and what a nut job she is at the Washington Post and the way that they conduct their business. And and it's a tactic at all these outlets to do like Mulkey said in her opening about, you know, we're going live with this story uh, and can you get, the, get us yeah. – uh, a reply by this deadline knowing chicken full shit well work is what that is. That's chicken yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I'm not tiger shark, but I will talk on real quick. Uh, I did take Bob Mann's media law class, <laughs> not, not actually Bob Mann, but he taught that class. Um, and one of the things about these, it's actually a libel suit, not defamation. Cause it's written. Uh, and one of the things that's so tough to sue on this is the burden of proof is on the plaintiff. You have to prove they did it. And one of the really toughest malice. parts about it, uh, you have to prove malice. That's what I was going to say. Malice is so hard to prove. And that for those, you know, maybe who don't know it, that, that means you have to prove they did it with the intent of lying. Because if they just lied and it was a mistake or they got a bad, they're covered. There's a lot. And there's like eight burdens of proof on the plaintiff to actually win these cases so it's tough to actually win but again kim mulkey she's got the resources and i think she brought up a real good point she's one of the few people who have the resources and willingness to actually stand up to something that's a load of crap if that is what it is i don't actually know what's in the story we'll see but they seem to think it's a load of crap all right let's let's uh, dive into some comments uh, Dane Bergeron. Okay, you woke me up from my nap. Where are you at? Uh, yeah, we were, we were trying, we were scrambling behind the scenes to get this one live. Barry Barbier looks like the softball team's uh, struggling. Mark Cumbie, what the heck's going on? Hello, Mike and Preston. Uh, guard play needed. Uh, Mike Prima from uh, St. Landry, glad to have you with us. Who is the reporter? His name's Kent Babb. Um, Jeff Garman says I watched the press conference in Washington Post, New York Times, or propaganda outlets. Uh, the reporter is a South Carolina graduate. Think that's a coincidence. No, it is not. Um, I guarantee it probably has, um, you know, the coaching staff at South Carolina uh, in, in his contacts in his phone as well. Uh, Jake Nola, I hear the hack Kent Babb is from South Carolina. If true, I wonder who asked him to write it. Okay. Do you think Don Staley would pull anything like that? I, I don't. I mean, I don't think she likes Kim Mulkey at all, but – I don't think she would call in a hit piece. Dane Bergeron, Pat Forty, uh, Glenn Gildo, and Bab should move to San Francisco and live together. Um, all corporate media, for that matter. Um, Pat Forty, all he did was just uh, he tease it. it, or he yeah. he got wind that the Washington Post was working on such a story, and um, of course, I don't know if the Washington Post was too happy about that. Yeah, uh, I was about to say they probably are pissed. Or maybe he found out uh, uh, through another channel that LSU was circling the wagons um, to head this one off. But uh, <coughs> excuse me. There you go. Let's see. Jeff Garman LSU needs a circle of wagons with President Tate backing multi multi one hundred percent of the hit. Uh, look, you don't have to d doubt whether President Tate uh, is behind Kim Mulkey or not. He absolutely is. I was going to um, touch on this one. I saw this one up there. 
And we actually had an experience that, that today that really, you know, brought that one to life. So here's the thing. President Tate is bought into the culture of this university and the athletics and knows what it means to the students, the professors, all the professors except Bob Mann and uh, what, what it means to everybody. And he, he will support him. That's that's something you might have had to worry about with former presidents, not not President Tate. But it's not just him. It's the whole alignment of everything. Like we saw Scott Woodward walking around the hallways of football practices, even had a quick comment with him today. Uh, and I, I remember joking with you afterwards, like, do you think that's something Joe Oliva would be doing, walking around the halls of the football team, checking in, seeing how the, he, he really doesn't look at himself as, a, he, he looks at himself as part of every one of these teams. That's why Brian Kelly, when he comes here and talks about the alignment, it's not just talk and words. It's like you actually see the university's leadership really is aligned with the athletics now. No, you, you, uh, we watched uh, Scott Woodward on the sideline. Uh, a lot of recruits there, which we're going to be reaching out to uh as soon as I can uh, catch our breath uh, here in a, in a couple of hours, uh, a lot of great uh, recruits on campus, visitors. And, uh, of course, we've already got uh, our practice video up on tigerbait.com. Go subscribe. Try us out for $1. Got uh, almost 14 minutes of, of great uh, video. I was filming. Preston was uh, filming with uh, his camera. And uh, we, we put together a, a, a pretty lengthy uh, uh, video package. And, um, and so you can check that out on tigerbait.com. Uh, the Mulkey press conference is, is also up as well as uh, all my locker room interviews uh, with the LSU women's basketball team, which was going on at the same time that Mulkey was across the hall uh, reading her statement. Uh, I wish the NCA, the way they put these tournaments together um, and what the media schedule is, it's you either have to pick one. You're either doing player interviews in the locker room uh, or you're in the, in the main room when, when the head coach is talking. So, uh, but we find a way to get it all done. All right. Um, you want to talk some football? Yeah, hold on one second. Let me get this, go, go uh. through some of these again. Rebels 4, I'm flying to D.C. on Wednesday. I'm going to wear Kim Mulkey's shirt every day. I'm there. Mulkey for president. <laughs> um, the, the the Washington Compost. Um, if I'm Don Staley, I'm going to call this reporter and let them know that it's not good PR at all, PR at all for the Southeastern Conference let alone South Carolina, because it's blatantly, obviously biased. Um, you know, I'll add something to this. Mulkey herself, since she's been at LSU, will talk about how, look, when you coach the number of players that she has over a lifetime, uh, yeah, there's going to be some players that didn't have a good experience in her program. That's just natural, whether it's yeah. playing time or didn't get along with another assistant. Maybe they didn't get along with her. That's okay. That's going to happen. Um, I, I I got all day. I can list players uh, in, in Nick Saban's program at LSU that couldn't stand him. Several of them that wanted to fight him. Um, that, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, you know, but like she said, and she's right. Um, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to reach out to, uh, you know, dozens or, or 50 or 60 former players, you're, it's highly likely you're going to get three or four that are going to go on the record. I don't know how many Kent Babb has gotten to say bad things about her, um, but you can spend all day in Twitter DMs and tracking down phone numbers and even and offer anonymity and, and they will, uh, won't, won't say your name if you'll just say something bad about her. Um, yeah, that, that, that's not difficult. I tell you what, I bet you these girls come out fired up against Middle Tennessee tomorrow. I mean, Kateri uh, <laughs> Poole uh, it, it was booted out of the program, yet I see her at every single LSU women's basketball game this entire season. I saw her in the PMAC last night. Hmm. You know? Uh, yeah, Dane Bergeron, where is Tiger Shark to weigh in on this? I'm sure if earlier. he doesn't uh, chime in here today, which he's probably uh, a busy uh, – uh, in, with some sporting event, uh, he'll probably do it on our on our message board uh, at some. I point. bet you he'll wait till the piece comes out. He likes to get yeah. some legal analysis of what's actually there. Yep. Um. All right. Uh, that's it for that. But if uh, let me see, uh, let me scroll down. Yeah, Ronnie Prude did get into it with Saban. Uh. 
Uh, I don't think Trev Falk cared for him too much either. Neither did Kyle Williams, and there's many others. You know, that's a good transition. You know who got into it today at practice, right? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, that, if y'all, we, we we might circle back before this is over with. Um, but first of all, uh, before we turn to football, this uh, uh, practice report, which this is now a practice report, uh, Kim Mulkey uh, show, uh, is brought to you by the Smokey Investment Team. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Bart and Brian over at the Smokey Investment Team in Alexandria uh, before we get out of here. But um, uh, again, we, we had the 15 or 20 minutes of video and, and photo time, and but we were allowed to stay the entire time today. Um, Sage Ryan with uh, two interceptions on Garrett Nussmeyer. Uh, Kylan Jackson, as, as Preston just talked about, uh, <laughs> uh, was having a, a time with the tight ends and gotten a, a major he got into a bunch of scuffles today. He, he was one in one, uh, in, in several of them. Him and uh, Plimpton were, um, they got into a uh, big brawl. Him and him and Plimpton, uh, Kylan Jackson gave up a touchdown to him on a goal line set. Kylan Jackson did not like that, and he made sure to let Kamari and Pimpton know was yapping his mouth, uh, and then Kamori and Pimpton did not like that yapping, and they really got into it. Uh, it was a pretty big brawl. It actually took a while to get them off of each other. I don't know if any punches were thrown or anything like that, but they were definitely shoving each other. It was a big, big gathering. I did notice Garrett Nussmeyer ran from, you know, basically 20, 30 yards away to break it up, really showed some leadership there. But, you know, I, I don't think coaches or anybody was really mad about it. It just shows that there's an intensity out there. Yeah, and look, this is this goes on every practice. Um, the media, we're out there, and we see it, and we think that uh, it's the end of the world. And we we saw that last year, and um, it's natural, and it's a part. That's football. Um, no big deal. But you don't like seeing Jackson uh, throw a punch. Uh, that's how you get a broken hand. Did you see that? Okay, I didn't see that. I, I heard some people it. maybe maybe clamoring about it. I just, it's tough to see it in the moment. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, where That's my angle, it was, you it was very, it cool. very, it was very much a punch. It happens. Uh, though. I mean, and had it, had it hit a helmet, he he would have a broken hand right now. <laughs> uh, By the way, let's talk about picking a fight with Matt Markway. <laughs> Kamori had pipped it in, in one pre Like Kyla Jackson's not afraid. He's picking on the big dogs out there. Like, like who are you going to go after next? Will Campbell? Like, <laughs> All right, what do you, how do you want to do this, Preston? You want to go? You want to start on one side of the ball and go uh, by position? What we saw today? I was I was thinking kind of chronologically what I saw. Um, I'll, I'll start with drills. Um, you know, I, I spent a lot of time, and you can see this this footage on TigerBait.com. I spent a lot of time with the safeties and DBs, and I noticed and linebackers as well. And I noticed a lot of open field tackling drills, drills where they're making you change direction. You're heading back in coverage. And then you got to flip your hips because they pass the ball underneath and really focus on making the tackle. And I'm going to be honest, and you can see this on film, these guys were struggling with it. It looked like they really hadn't done anything like that. And I think if you watched last year, you could see that changing direction and making a tackle was a massive problem for this entire defense. So uh, I saw a lot of guys stumbling, and we're talking about going and tackling a dumb dummy. I really do think they need to – really work on the basics, the elementaries of this football team. I think a lot of that really just just did not click with those guys a year ago. Um, so that that was one thing that stood out. Did anything stand out to you in the the drill section while you were filming? You kind of went to the offense while I was filming defense. Well, I will I will say, you know, I it, it would have been difficult to do, but I, I kept thinking all last year that, you know, McBride from Denham was a kid that I might – could say is the top player in the state. He's a beast. And um I had him right there in that in that discussion. And um now I'm kind of kicking myself. Well, I I'm not gonna say that yet. Uh, it's it, there's pl still plenty of time. Why are you kicking um, but, yourself over him? Well, just because I, I think I just I mean, but look, I, I will I mean I've been saying all along that it, it's a matter of time before he's out on the field. I, I just think yeah, he's I agree. a beast. He's running with and, the twos right now. Um yeah. Yeah, I, I, they have an interesting defensive backfield. They have uh, – so at free is Sage Ryan. And Sage Ryan was your best defensive back today. He had two interceptions, including a pick six. He, he's your best defensive back. 
And and last year, by the way, he graded out as your best defensive back too. Zy Alexander was on the sideline, although he was walking around pretty well, I thought, stretching out and stuff like that, but no brace or anything. But he is on the sideline. So you have Taviano at one corner, and then the other corner is Ashton Stamps. Uh, both those guys are going to be fighting for basically one starting spot when Zy gets back. Uh, it's strong. You actually had Jarden Gilbert, the Texas A&M transfer, who uh, was okay. He got mossed by Kyron Lacey, though, on that deep ball. Remember that really nice catch Kyron Lacey made? Yeah. Oh, man. And it was underthrown, too, by the way. He was open by, like, five yards. And then he got underthrown, and he just went up over the top over uh, Jarden Gilbert. And then they've got major burns at star is what coaches called it, star defensive back. It looks more like a rover safety to me or a nickelback, but they've got him like up close to the line of scrimmage, and they're calling it a star back. So, uh, And by the way, my streak continues. Uh, whenever I say something that's either negative or marginally negative about a player, yeah, the very next play they do something big. I was uh, uh, saying uh, something mild about Sage. Next play, interception. Last yeah. night, I, I was uh, kind of uh, in our live chat uh, thread on the, at the women's game, talking about Michaela William and some really bad decisions shooting selection-wise. She nails a three as soon as I type that out. Um, and we know what Kyron Lacey does to me uh, every time <laughs> uh, for, for the last two years. Um, he looked good today, mossed somebody. Um, who was it he mossed? He mossed uh, Jordan Gilbert. Jordan Gilbert. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the receivers, the, the offense is just so far is so far ahead of the defense. Um, yeah, it is. It and is. they should be. Um, now, hold up. I'm going to say this. Even For the even first if, half of practice, um, they, were, they were making the defense look silly in the first half. The defense did eventually kind of get it together, though. They kind of started making some good plays. Deshaun McBride made a good play on a, on a comeback. By the way, physically, he's filled out. I mean, that is a big player. Expect him on the field a little bit pretty soon. Um, uh, P.J. Woodland running with the twos. He looks really nimble with some quick feet. Expect him to, to work his way on the field, I think. He, he looked really good as well. Uh, and, you know, they, they eventually, like, like, you know, Sage Ryan – those interceptions he made were toward the end of practice. The, the defense did get settled in and looked – they looked better than they did during practice last year, right? But that probably has a bit to do with the offense isn't as good as last year either. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, Major Burns is out there. I think I graduated high school with Major. Yeah. Um, 1972. He, uh, yeah. Um, Jacoby Guillory came up and said hello and um, – of course, uh, we know how thin that spot is, and um, Bo Davis was working that unit, uh, hitting the sleds pretty hard today. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, some of my biggest questions now, after when we're out there, is is the the battle for the the number two quarterback is is that open and, and shut? Um, no, I think it's wide open. Yeah, I mean, I, is it? I don't. I don't think it's necessarily that Swan's the guy over over Ricky Collins. I think Ricky Collins is going to have every opportunity to, to win that number two spot. By the way, they shared um, reps all practice long. And I don't know that one necessarily stood out as necessarily better than the other. I do know that Garrett Nussmeyer looks head and tails better than both of them. Um, I will say I will say this. I, I like, the, I like the, uh, the velocity that I see in some of Colin Hurley's throws. So, mm -hmm. um, Well, I think Colin good, Hurley as a fourth-team quarterback is pretty darn good. Yeah, uh, wait, wait to see what he's going to look like in a year or two. I think that's going to be um, with time and, and and the system. And as young as he is, uh, just wait, wait on him. Um, yeah, I, I think he's, he. By the way, talk about a physically filled out guy. He fills out that uniform. He he doesn't need to gain any kind of weight. Unlike most, yeah, he does not look a, like a guy who should just be, uh, you know, re, uh, you know. Picking out his tux for junior senior prom. No, and he. By the way, he's sixteen years, seventeen. He just turned seventeen a couple weeks ago. So there you go. Okay, yeah. I was wondering when his birth date was. It's March, like March fourth or something like that. I mean, he's young. So he. By the way, so he started spring practice as a sixteen-year-old. Uh, not very many guys can say that. That's got to be a record in, in the history of LSU. 
youngest player ever. It might be, man. It might because n- nowadays you got more players enrolling early than you've ever had. So that by itself, and then you had a guy who is not only enrolling early but graduating a year early. Uh, somebody asked about the interior defensive line, and Mike, uh, I think they're going to need Gillery, Jalen Lee, Sean Washington, walk-ons. Yeah, uh, you have a walk-on on your second string defensive tackle unit uh and by the way i love the walk on preston hickey favorite player on the team but um i mean we're talking about a walk on on your second team defensive unit why is your favorite your favorite player just because great name name. great name also cool kid we talked to him on twitter but uh, and we talked to his dad today too by the way so favorite player does he also have the phantom menaces in his top three star wars films top five top five all right, so what, see, man, uh, all the media, by the way, they love to harass me on this. Uh, Cobble, uh, uh, you know, all those guys, they'll give me jock come after me for that. I'm like, man, the duel of fates was awesome. Darth Maul, are you kidding me? Qui Gon Jinn, get out of here. Oh, it's my a good God. movie. It's a good movie. All right, uh, we veered off. Uh, I'll let you and T Bob do a show one day on, on that. Hey, um, man, I'll do it. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, how, that's that was from Spectrum Well Care. Mm, that's what uh, was, big MIL. Love you, Coach Moki. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, three intersections. Uh, what the X Machine said. Yeah, for Sage Ryan or overall. I don't know that Sage um, had three. Uh, did he get another one at the end? I don't. I don't recall. I recall seeing two, but I don't. By the way, it. the the fir- the interception by say uh, Jock says. Um, we're going to have an interception by Sage Ryan to end this thing. And then it happened. Jacques Doucet said that, said that standing wow. next to me today. Uh, intensity from the defensive backs was much higher than I saw a year ago. Seems like last year was more of a focus and whatever. It, these guys were hype. These guys were wanting to make plays. They didn't always make the plays. And they got a little grumpy when they didn't. Um I remember Sage Ryan, in fact, got beat on a play, and he's at the sideline just cursing out, angry that he, you know, they they have pride there, right? I just wonder if that pride will translate on the field. I think they're going to be improved. It's just um, there's a lot of room in between where they were a year ago and good. So where they fall in between there or beyond there, we'll have to see. Someone wants to know how right. Garrett oh, – go ahead, Mike. Hold on one second. Uh, this uh, report, of course, is brought to you by the Smoky Investment Team. Uh, what is something you could do with your money that would uh, be meaningful to you? Uh, do you have uh, goals you want to reach? Do you feel like you need some guidance to realize those goals? At the Smoky Investment Team, they keep people – get get they help people set their goals and work towards them. They have over 50 years of experience doing just that. If you want to get serious about – about uh, realizing your financial potential, call them at 318-448-3201. That's 318-448-3201. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered uh, investment advisor, member FINRA slash SIPC. Uh, I've known Bart Smokey and his son Brian for over 20 years. No finer people. Again, give them a call. Uh, Nobody knows the right way to invest and get you prepared for the future. Uh, better than uh, Bart and Brian Smokey, 318-448-3201. And we thank them uh, for sponsoring these football reports uh, after every spring practice that uh, we're allowed out there. All right, you were saying, Preston, I'm sorry. Are you muted? First off, Bart Smokey go. has to be hype about the uh investment he's getting out of today right with all the mulky stuff mixed in here but um someone was asking about garrett nussmeyer and how he looked i i would say he's right where he looked at the ball game good you know he he threw some throws he had, some, he, had a, he had a number of uh, he had many underthrown balls today. He, he, he had he had some he was off on but he's throwing it all over the place and trusting talented receivers um but you're also Lacey. several weeks you're also several weeks in a practice where you know, he, he he might be getting that camp on a bit. Maybe so. Um, I thought he looked good. Good. I, I, I don't think anything out there. I, I You know, he probably wasn't as good as Jaden Daniels was at practice a year ago. But, um, no, I don't I don't think – I think if you have a problem this year, I don't think Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be your problem. Um, I like the quarterback spot, obviously. And uh, 
Brian Kelly said it in his press conference earlier today. They've got to buckle down with the run game. You've got to have a potent running attack, and it has to come from your running back spot. Garrett Nussmeyer isn't going to count for, you know, half or, or, or two thirds of your, your your rushing total at the end of the season. Your running backs are going to need to get it done. I thought Josh Williams looked really good today. Uh, I was filming running backs, and Frank Wilson was getting after Caleb Jackson a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, it's great to have. Williams back for another year, um, but the, the the biggest talent is is Caleb Jackson, and oh, he's a star. Uh, I, I just hope whatever it is that uh, he needs to do, uh, knowing his uh, blocking assignments and passing situations, et cetera, that uh, he gets a full grasp of all of it, so that uh, he can be the guy because he needs to be just about the every down back and the guy you go to uh, because he's a game breaker. Um, Do you think Caden Durham should compete for that role as well in the fall? Yeah, but you know he's not there now. Um, had right, he been a midterm, gr- yeah. So, but, but in the fall, though, I mean, I think you know, especially my, as a my, pace, pace guy, because he's fast. My my only worry is is you know how how much will will you get to see him as a true freshman? Um, just because we've seen the way the running backs have been ro- rotated. Uh, and yeah. played un- under Frank and, and, and Brian Kelly. Well, I can't imagine that they don't have three backs run. to. I, I think whoever's on the roster is going to be playing because right now you have two running backs. Uh, and it is Josh Williams who has almost all the first team reps right now, although Caleb Jackson is mixing in. But it looks like it's going to be Josh Williams first, then Kate, Caleb Jackson based off what we're seeing. But I agree with you. Caleb Jackson is your stud. Donald Wright, any deal, defensive line in the transfer portal you like? Um, LSU offered uh, one from Indiana the other day, who's also at, he was at Texas Tech before. Um, that's one that they've extended an offer to. But the 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 transfer portal kids are are, are going to are going to there's going to be more names that come uh, between After spring, now and yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's early. Uh, and I, I was talking to Hunt Palmer on his show yesterday, and he asked about that. And I said, yeah, they offered the guy, but right now there's no heroes for your program in the portal. Look, look, the the, the likelihood of having some extra – having some defensive tackles that you're going to get in the portal is, is you're going to get somebody. Um, I think they need two or three. Um, but, again, how good are they going to be? Are you just getting yeah. – are you just getting bodies? Are you? That's where I, you know, Buddy and I disagree. I, I, I don't know that um, you're going to get somebody in the portal that is is a normal SEC LSU starter. Yeah, I don't know that you're going to uh, get anybody on LSU's roster that is <laughs> is that either. I mean, defensive tackle is looking like your weak spot of the team right now. Although I'm not Jacoby and Gillard looking is, like is, it is. It yeah, is. I mean, fact, Jacoby and Guillory uh, is looking good, but I don't know that he's enough by himself. This is the worst defensive line room in my lifetime at LSU. It's not great, and I and I'm I'm talking interior. Um, I mean, the defensive ends uh, aren't world beaters either. Uh, I didn't get but too but, much but there's some them. guys there that I, that um, you know. Let, let's see um, how that uh, plays out because. I mean, Look, Deshaun I, I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at you, dude. I mean, I'm looking at Savion Jones, and I'm like, man, come on, man. Like, uh, I mean, is there anybody that looks more impressive than Savion Jones in a uniform? Um, Who's the um, uh, guy who plays for the Vikings now? <laughs> uh, Daniel Hunter. Yeah, him? Daniel Hunter. Yeah, yeah I mean, but, uh, but uh, believe me, Savion Jones ain't far off, far off from, from that. Um, yeah. I mean, look, Quincy uh, you Wiggins, know, Quincy look, Wiggins looked more impressive. Quincy than Wiggins, him. you know, um, looked like Tarzan, played like yeah. Jane, though. Yep. How's Sean Washington looking? Um, still a work in progress. And um, in fact, uh, I want to go back and re watch my tape uh, from earlier today. I, I, I focused my camera a good bit on, on the defensive line. Um, did you get a chance to look at Sean at all? I did not really. I mean, I saw he was running with the twos. I'm going to be honest. My eyes kind of were, were more focused on the defensive backs during that portion. And and I kind of had to chuckle as I saw the walk-in running out next to him um, as well. It's like, that's not a good sign for depth. 
I really liked what I saw from wide receivers today. Um, I thought Chris Hilton looked good. Aaron Anderson looked sharp. Um, he did look know, sharp. Uh, Aaron Anderson uh, is basically saying that uh, this is the the healthiest he's ever been, uh, and and he he's never felt so good. He looked it, and um, uh, but I want to temper it. Let's let's see let's let's have him do it. I thought Kyle Parker looked good. Kyle Parker Shelton Sampson polished. with a touchdown. Shelton he Sampson did, looked he good did. today. He did, really, but he's I, been running with the threes, though. He didn't run with the ones at all. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, I still think he needs to work on a couple things like route running, intensity off the line of scrimmage, that kind of stuff, using you know using his hands. I, I still think he, he he could be a little bit away development-wise. Uh, and then you've got studs like Kyron Lacey. Uh, 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 Chris Hilton was running with the ones today. C.J. Daniels is there. And C.J. Daniels looked good today, too. I, I'll say this. I'm, I'm more excited about uh, Shelton Sampson after seeing him today than I was before. Yeah, no, I, I agree. He had a nice toe dragging touchdown in the, in the back corner of the end zone. Ricky Collins had a good connection with him. Uh, was it Xavion Thomas was there looking good too? The most exciting part. And I told everybody I was sitting at practice. We were watching the punts. So I was like, that's the biggest improvement of the year. If Xavion Thomas could go back there and just catch punts. Good job. You know, um, you know, we all had to laugh. They're like, wait, Greg Clayton in there just to fair catch it? No, nope, no. Nope. And, and there was no bobbles. There was none of that. And there were some bobbles and stuff like that present during fall camp for this kind of stuff. So uh, I like what Peyton Todd, Peyton Todd showed some good control out there. And Xavion Thomas did a good job returning. Looks like the other returner is going to be uh, the walk-on kid, trying to remember his name. Um, it'll hit me in a bit. Um. Let's see what else we got. Uh, I'm going through my notes. Um, linebacker. Um, I, I liked what I saw out of Whit Weeks today. Um, Harold Perkins uh, getting a, a little bit of one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching from Brian Kelly at one point uh, today. Um, or maybe that was just some talking to about something, but um, – Looked like there was some teaching going on there. Um, I tell you what, another guy I need to go back and watch my tape because I didn't see him and maybe you did. Uh, did you watch number eleven, Jackson Howard, at all? No, I didn't get a, a look at him. I at know all. I've got I've got some video of him. I need to go back and and single him out uh, yeah. and eyeball him. I do know this: the ones was Greg Penn and Harold Perkins as your two linebackers. Because remember, they were running five DBs and four defensive linemen, so it was a four-two-five they were running today. Uh, and that meant Wet West and Wit Weeks ran the twos, and I think they both played very well. I, I don't, I didn't see anything out of them. They were both doing good. It's kind of hard to tell how they're doing in the running game because it's thud tackling. Which I don't. I'm not a super big fan of because you get situations where. Um, you know, 165 pound PJ Woodland, <laughs> Caleb Jackson, while he's on a block, by the way, and bangs into Caleb Jackson, they whistle him down. I'm like, there's just no way PJ Woodland with a blocker on him pulls Caleb Jackson down behind the line of scrimmage. Like, there's just not a chance in hell. That's that's at least a 10 yard gain. Jeff Garman with the question where I was about to go before I saw him, uh, but would put it up. Thank you for that, Jeff. Um, yeah. Um, first of all, on special teams, I think it's night and day, the coaching that we're seeing. Um, it really looked organized uh, with, with purpose. Um, they were really spending some quality time uh, on special teams today. And um, I got to watch the punters punt and and, and um, certainly Peyton Todd and, and uh, oh, uh, ba Badger Hargett. Yeah, Badger Hargett, um, he had a boomer, man. Yep. And um pretty good. He had a boomer. I, I you know, without having a stopwatch, I don't know if he had the hang time they wanted, but he had the distance. Um, yeah, no. Um, but we were talking I, about that on sideline. Peyton Todd had much better hang time, but I mean Badger Hargett hit one hard where the returner had to go back ten yards or so. Yeah. Um, you know, without being out there and, and seeing the charts and uh, what the averages are and, and what they are looking like every day of spring uh, to see who's been more consistent. You know, we know Peyton Todd has a heck of a leg. Um, the worry has been how consistent can he be 
Um, but uh, is it is uh, you know I, I wonder behind the scenes is that more of a competition than we think it is? Um, you yeah. know, w- what would you say Badger Hargett's height and weight is? I, what do they list him on the small? Bench? They they list him at five eight, and that sounds right. We we were joking about how how big the difference is. Peyton Todd is six five. I just Peyton Todd was not just a linebacker at West Monroe; he was a good linebacker. For West Monroe before he tore his ACL. Badger Hargett he, looks like uh, Milam from LSU tiny. baseball. If he put on a foot, if he put on a football uniform, I understand um, there is he, a full. But he's got a leg. Inches. There's a full nine inch difference. It's like that fight LSU had in women's basketball today. The the Cardova and and what's her name got in. It's like there is a massive size difference in the two punters. So why is the defensive line in the end so bad? What happened? Is it the NIL that's making LSU not appealing to players? I don't understand. It's a combination of things. It's uh, multiple years in a row with different defensive line coaches, no continuity, new defensive coordinators. Uh, every time you turn around, um, uh, you know, I don't know if you could get one. I don't know if you get one player personnel guy to point the finger at another player personnel guy. Um, there was a guy that was there who's now at another SEC school that that everybody will point at. Um, I'll just say that um, I think a major mistake was made, regardless if Wingo and Mason Smith were coming back for another year. They needed to get two in the portal, and they didn't. And Let's put it like this. I think the last two years it's been coaching, uh, and I think this year it's talent is the problem because of the bad coaching. So I think there's so many areas where, the, where this where it dropped the ball, and it's inexcusable. And um, I I'll just leave it at that. But I will say this, and that's, you know, the running deal between Buddy and I every Wednesday night is that if there is a great defensive tackle that gets in the portal and it is, it, and it, first of all, what are the odds that a, a bona fide SEC starter is in the portal in the next month or so? And slim. Is, 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 there, is there a chance where there's two or three of them? All right, the, none. The, the the other the other schools in college football aren't just going to part like the Red Sea, yeah. Um, and, and say, okay, Ellis, you just go ahead and have them. We know you really need one. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's going to want them. It's going to get a little and better then, when Dominic McKinley and, arrives. And then and then, and then can El, you know where's that kid from originally? Uh, what relationships might he have with uh, staff somewhere else? And then what is the NIL price tag? And, and is LSU going to be in the ballpark? That that's those are all the questions. Um, we'll see, um, but uh, there there is some there is some confidence though. I'll tell you this uh, in the building that uh, they're going to get it done, and um, you got to give this staff time. You just got to give them time. Um, I think there's going to be some growing pains. I think there's going to be some times this coming season where you're probably just as aggravated in the defenses as you were last year. I. Uh, uh, you're just going to have to give them time. Um, I like the linebackers. I think you got enough DBs to get the job done, but the defensive line is no doubt a problem. Um, we'll see. Bo Davis and Blake Baker know some players out there. Hopefully they can pull them in. Um, absolutely. All right, guys. Uh, this impromptu uh, Tiger Bait Live show. Uh, thanks again to the Smokey Investment Team. For sponsoring, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Uh, right in the middle of a Saturday, beautiful weather, and uh, looks like I got some sun. Did you, Preston? You know, I, a lot of people crack a joke, but I wear my little Nick Saban hat out there, and I'm good to go, man. I mean, look, I'm nice and not. You're you're red. Yeah, I'm yeah. good. L- like the jokes they made with my uh, Panama hat that I wore on practice yeah, last yeah, year. Exactly like that. Yeah, but I love my hat, man. It's American. It's over hat here, by the way. I'm, I'm about I'm about to pull it out. So if you enjoyed it, it's coming out. Of, <laughs> it's coming out of my fault. <laughs> No, so I stay good out there, man. All right. Uh, Dan Bergeron says, good job, guys. Make sure to get out and vote. That's right. It's uh, election day today. Um, Get out and vote. And um, and, uh, now we wait to see the Washington Post. Uh, Already on on our YouTube channel is Brian Kelly from earlier today. Uh, LSU uh, women's uh, uh, interviews from the locker room. I got Michaela Williams, Anissa Morrow, Last year, Poa. Last year, Poa was hilarious. Uh, talked to her about uh, her parents uh, were in from Australia, 
And uh, you're going to laugh when she hears about uh, what her parents like about America. Uh, that's one of the last interviews in that, uh, I think it's about 10 or 12 minutes. Um, she's awesome. She, she, she's got a good sense of humor. Um, and of course, Kim Mulkey from today, you watch that entire thing. Flaugier and Angel Reese were part of that, uh, uh, at the, the main stage and, um, LSU baseball from last night. We got that post game. We'll have it again, uh, this evening, LSU going for number two against Florida. I made my prediction LSU sweeps this weekend. We'll see if it holds up in two o'clock tomorrow on ABC, LSU, middle Tennessee and, um, LSU's focus, it seems like they don't have another – they commit 24 turnovers tomorrow, and they're going to lose. I bet you and they so, come out fired up. I bet you Little they – Middle Tennessee is a darn good basketball team, and they need to come out focused, and the PMAC is sold out. It's going to be rocking 2 o'clock ABC, and uh, uh, they're pretty excited about that because they get two meals in before uh, 2 p.m. tip-off. So uh, lots of stuff going on, and uh, plus recruiting. I'm about to – I'm going to take a break here, and then I'm going to get to work on some recruiting stuff to uh, see how uh, incredible a group of uh, recruiting visitors uh, at football practice today. So, And we've got uh, on the uh, premium side of Tiger Bait. Go to TigerBait.com. We've got that 13-minute uh, minute, uh, practice uh, uh, highlight footage put together for you, a big one. So, all right. Uh, thanks, for everybody, for tuning in on a Saturday, and uh, go to TigerBait.com. Thank you all. Thanks, Preston.